Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Lightblocks video and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simulator part 3 and as you can see, here's the map I've built um, over like <laughs> um, before recording this video and yeah, um, today what we're going to be doing is making a portal door um, and uh, making the shop actually work so that, you know, you can actually buy any stuff as uh, one of my uh, viewers comment and com commented in my last video. So, yeah, th uh, there's only two things, but it is a lot to do today. So let's get right on with the video. Um, so what I mean by portals is like when you go into it, um, if you have a certain amount of XP or something, you go to the next map. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. So first, I'm going to build the portal. Resize it. Make it look good. All right, so yeah, that's um, good. And gonna change the color of it and all that. Um, and one of my viewers also asked me um, how I'm doing like really specific uh, movements, like really um, small, because um, and that's because I'm turning off collisions so if i did turn on collisions um it won't allow me to pull it back i mean let me let me show you a demonstration so with collisions on it can go any through any part but without collisions on it can't go through any part as you can see here because um it's stuck you see i don't know why this is oh oh my god yeah i don't know why this yeah see it doesn't go through so that's how collisions work um and another viewer also asked me like how do i do like really small movements and that's when you go to model and then here move uh 0 0.1 spec so if i put like 10 studs and then did resizing of this it'll be like really big you know gaps that's how i do my <laughs> building uh, the same with rotate of course so yeah um just put it back it says it will be right back all right, so I'm changing the color to gold-ish thingy. Um, I'm gonna rename these parts to portal frame. Group them. Name it portal. And then I'm gonna add a new part. Put it in here. Okay, this is a thin door, but like, I mean, that's what we want because that's how portals are right so i'm gonna make this a bit transparent just to make it look a bit like a, a portal so that's good that's good and then make it blue or purple i think purple looks good and then make the uh, material neon <laughs> that looks really good and rename the part to portal part portal part and then put it back into the portal and then what you want to do is um go to the leader stat script because now i'm going to add a new uh what do you say variable in like in the leaderboard call calling it xp um just so that like there's an other thing that players can use uh, to like enter doors and stuff so that's what we're gonna do oh looks like a roblox studio added a new feature where it highlights where I'm clicking, so that's good. So I'm gonna um, go in here and then local exp experience is equal to instance dot new int value and then uh, exp dot parent. Oops, parent is equal to leader stats and exp dot name is equal to xp for me you can rename it to whatever you want um you can also do it like if you have a certain amount of money i'm just adding a new um xp thing just to make my game a bit more interesting and stuff so yeah and then exp um dot value is equal to zero all right so we've created a new variable and now go to the uh, main script here 
and over here as you can see script dot add swipes so when they get the add swipes uh, remote event this happens so we're gonna also add the exp thing so player dot lead sets dot swipes dot value is equal to player dot lead stats dot um oh not swipe sorry um xp so xp dot value xp dot value plus should i say two maybe ten um just to make it sort of like an xp actually nine just to be specific um and then what you want to do is go to the portal part or to the portal part the one that the player should touch and then add a script into it add a script i'm going to rename it to teleport script doesn't matter what you need rename it to uh, because we're not going to be using it anyway i mean using it in other scripts scripts and in that we're going to write script dot parent dot touched colon connect function hit and then what we're going to do is define player so local player is equal to hit dot parent oops i thought it was going to come dot parent on find first child humanoid so um the player is um so whoever hit is if the parent has the child humanoid then player will be defined uh, i mean this variable will be put into the player variable and then uh, we're going to write local plauir um you can write plr but like i just want to be creative and then game dot um players can get player from character hit dot parent And then in that, if you write if player dot leader stats, oops, stats dot xp dot value is greater than or equal to, um, let's put um, five, 50. So 50, then um, player dot torso. So the player has a part called torso, which is like the middle part and um that's like th what holds the whole body together so player.toso.c frame so c frame is this um like camera frame okay so camera frame equals c frame dot new oh, why is this okay okay c frame dot new um so we need a position of it so for, for that position uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to add a new part. And then in that part, you'll find the position variable. So just copy that. So I've copied it. And go to the back to the teleport script. Delete this part. You don't need that anymore. Uh, go back to the teleport script. Inside the cframe.new. Just put this. Um, what do you say? Uh, this uh, where, uh, numbers. Okay. And then let's play. Um, play here. So go here and play here and here we are the big portal door and when we touch it oh the whole thing falls apart we have to um <laughs> anchor it all right so we have anchored it play here uh, check for any output errors they may there may be some output errors so money data locked and loaded, everything gone. And leader stats is not a male member of humanoid. Hmm. Alright guys, so yeah, it works perfectly fine. Uh, I was just testing it the wrong way. So uh, it works perfectly fine. So what you want to do is put player, like the second one. Actually, I'm just going to make this PLR just to be clear. So PLR, hit up parent and... Um, if their leader stats value is greater than or less than uh, greater than or equal than 50 then this will happen so let's play here um and what we're gonna do is um give ourselves a lot of xp so once we touch this 
um, we can't go through because we don't have enough XP. So what you want to do to test if this is working is go to console, go to server, and then type in game dot players. Oops, no capital L, players dot your username. So mine is Lightning Game Twenty Seven dot leader stats dot um xp dot value is equal to whatever you want i'm gonna put 50 just to be sure so 50 so i have 50 xp and when i touch this boom i'm away so i teleported to the parts position and yeah that's how it works so as you can see when i click it it added 9 xp to me and yeah it works perfectly perfectly fine so now what we want to do is add data store to XP because we don't want players losing their XP and then complaining to us and then we'll be like, uh, sorry. So yeah, um, we're going to go to the stat script. So as you can see, we have added this. So add a new thing called local um, XP data and then go down, go down, go down. And yeah, over here, we just... I'll copy this um, structure. So what we're going to do is local success two um, comma er <laughs> is equal to p call function. Um, yeah. So p call function xp data. Oops, not xp call. What's that? <laughs> xp data um, is equal to stat start store colon get async um, player whoops player dot user id dot dot um, xp or zero and then print xp data locked and loaded it's our kind of thing like a like a joke okay um so if success two then uh we want the xp dot value to be i mean not xp it should be exp because that's what the um this script knows it as so exp dot value um is equal to xp data and then else so if that did not work then we want print uh could not load xp data just to know what we could not load and one oops one why am i one or uh, and then go back to the go to the player removing function and put in local success to er uh, is equal to p call function um, stats data store colon set async player dot user id dot dot um, xp so that's the key as I said in the last video so player dot leader stats dot xp dot value all right um and then write else i mean not else sorry uh then go to if success two or er, then we want print our xp data loaded else uh i mean xp data saved not loaded just to uh for testing purposes and then print could not save xp data and then warn why that didn't happen and this should work perfectly fine what whoops i shouldn't have done that if success do um so this should work perfectly fine because we've already done it before um i'm gonna test it in game after i complete the rest of this video so now what we want to do is what do you say make um viable items in the shop right because we don't want a blank screen when we go to the shop and like try to buy something 
So close workspace and stuff, go to starter GUI, go to shop GUI, go to frame, and then make it visible so that we can see what we're working with. And then what you want to do is add a scrolling, fa um, scrolling frame, scrolling frame to this um, frame, to the frame, and then rename it to bats. I'm going to rename it to bats, um, but you don't have to. Um, and then I'm going to resize it to fit my game's liking. <laughs> my game's liking. <laughs> it's like my game has its own mind. So, yeah. I'm um, going to make it like this. Go down a bit. And then resize it. Alright. Is that good? Yeah. And then customize it to fit your liking. I'm going to be making this transparent. And then, uh, maybe, yeah, transparent. And then, yeah, that's about the, what I'm gonna do. But you can customize it as, uh, as like to your liking. So then, add a text button to this and name it. Um, what should I name it to? First item. Item. So this is the first item button. We're gonna be selling our, um, what do you say, stuff on. So gonna center it, and then uh, should I elongate it? I think. I mean that would be. Oops, what's happened? All right. Um. Yeah, I'll just elongate it a bit, and then make it to the center. Yeah, that's enough. And then customize it. I'm gonna customize. Alright, so rename the text to whatever one I'm gonna call this a super bat. And then uh, duplicate this button. So control D, rename it to second item or whatever you want, doesn't matter. Second item. And then move it, uh, changing the text to epic bat. I'm so creative, aren't I? Epic bat. And then what I'm gonna do. Is go to starter pack so where we have our first tool right here go to starter pack and um, duplicate it twice put duplicate these twice um, you can put in actually I'm gonna put in two different bats actually no because that would be too much hard work because I'm gonna uh, need to make it a tool so I'm just gonna duplicate this twice uh, rename this cricket bat to super bat and rename this cricket bat to epic bat. All right, and then you will have to go to replicate storage, add a new folder, call it um, items. I'm gonna call it to items, and then put these two in um, the items. All right, so now it's in the items, and what you wanna do is um, go to the first item, um, which is the super bat. Because that's in the first in the list and add a local script. I'm going to rename this to buy. And then what you want to do is write the following script. So local tools. So this is defining the folder or in which the, um, what do you say, this super bat resides in. So local storage dot item. And then go down local player is equal to game dot plays dot local player and go um, write this script dot parent dot mouse button one click whoops what uh oh sorry 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 um d delete the script guys um I didn't mean this um so we don't uh, need this. We actually um, need to put this script, uh, local script, inside of this button. You know, the, uh, the super bad button. So, yeah, sorry guys. So go to local script, rename it to buy. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, uh, define where it is. So, all right. So I've done that, and then we're gonna write script dot parent dot mouse button one click. So when this um 
a button is clicked, this function fires. So if player dot leader stats dot money dot value is greater than or equal to um set the price. So I'm gonna put this price to twenty uh because I already have twenty in my bank account, you know, in the game. So and and then what we're gonna do Oh, why is this having an oh okay okay so and and then player dot lead stats dot money dot value is equal to player dot lead stats dot money dot value minus twenty so this is to reduce the um what do you say oh why is this having an error um oh sorry i forgot to put then yeah so uh, be sure to put then and then yeah so w when this uh button is click it dedu deducts 20 uh 20 bucks and then uh we want the tool uh, tool to go um in the player's backpack which is the inventory so uh, tools dot super back colon clone and then dot uh, its parent um its parent should be the player's backpack. Ba player's backpack. <laughs> player's backpack. So player uh, colon wait for child backpack. All lowercase. So waiting for child backpack, and then uh, duplicate this script. Um, oops, Control D, and then put it in the second item, and then in that script. Um, you want to make uh, make the changes. I'm gonna increase the price to thirty. Um, and then yeah, put this to epic bat. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And yeah, um, that's it. So let's uh, what do you say? Um, make it invisible so the player can't see it the moment they join the game. And then go here and then play here. Yeah, play here. Here we are, 55 money we have. And there it is, it works. I mean, the GOI works. Um, yeah, and then super bat, there it is. Epic bat, it works perfectly fine. So I'm gonna click this, and you can see it works perfectly fine. Um, in future, I'm going to uh, show you data saving for the shop itself, and I'm also be going to show you um, how to, um, you know, avoid. So I'm going to show you. So let's go get over here. I'm going to uh, show you how to avoid like duplicating a thousand times. So we don't want that in our game. So yeah, and let's go to the actual Roblox game and test it out to see if the data store works. Um, before that, I have to make a duplicate of the map so that the player actually goes somewhere when they touch the portal. So let's do that. so I've made a duplicate of this um, what do you say um, the whole thing and I'm gonna add, uh, go to this uh, make the portal so I'm gonna add a part here and then get the destination position copy that delete this go to the portal script which portal is it okay not this portal um this portal go to that go to the teleport script and then replace this with the position you want so i'm replacing it to that and in this new portal um i'm gonna put the teleport script what are the so let's make a part over here right in front of this teleport part right here and then get the uh, position delete the part 
recorded the teleport script. Oh, which one? This one. Uh, yeah, this one. Recorded the teleport script. Whoops, not this one. <laughs> and change this to the position we got. And let's play. And uh, actually, let's save the game and play in real, you know, game game. So publish to Roblox. And then let's go to the game. All right, guys. So we're in the real game. And um, so let's go to the teleport. I haven't forgot like the saving data thing. So actually, let's click and get some XP. Um, I should actually reduce the cooldown time. So okay, we've got lots of XP, and let's go quickly over there. All right, so we're here, and whoops, we don't have enough XP. Um, we need fifty, right? So slash 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 console and then where's the server yeah server right there and over here game dot players dot lightning underscore game your username of course and then leader stats dot xp dot value is equal to a one million I am the god of this game, yay! So, and let's go in. And as you can see, we're here. And if we go through this portal, boom! All right, I just touched the portal twice. All right, so now let's go to the shop and test if the tools are actually coming into our pockets. Oh, why does this seem so glitchy? It's like moving and stuff. So here we are in the shop, and when we click it, it works perfectly fine. So that's how you make um, a working shop and a working portal door. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Oh yes, we have to test the XP saving thing, right? So I'm going to stop it. I mean, uh, close the game. Alright, so we're back in the game. And as you can see here, we have 1 million XP. It works perfectly fine. It's saved and all that. And yeah, um, that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. Um, our first episode got over a thousand views. Thank you so much. And we're right. Our, our subscriber count is rising really, really fast. So I'm really thankful to you guys for helping me um, build up this channel. And yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video and found this um, tutorial helpful. Uh, if you want more and if you have any ideas of what I could do next, leave them down below in the comment section below. I mean, in the comment section. I always read my comments. Um, I may not reply to them, but I always do. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to never miss another video. Until the next one, peace out.